This is PKF Texas Playbook. I'm Russ Capper, this week's guest host, and I'm here with the Honorable Kelly Ralston, Consul General and Senior Trade Commissioner, Australian Trade Commission, who is taking part in Coffee with the Consuls this Wednesday, August the 12th. Welcome to the Playbook, Kelly. Thanks, Russ. Great to be with you. You bet. Well, from my perspective, the United States and Australia have, have a very good and unique relationship. Uh, Texas and Australia, yeah. and even Houston and Australia really do. Share your perspective on that. Okay, well, it's a, it's a long question there, yes, Ross. It is. I might have to break that down. Okay. Um, I guess Australia and the US have had a long standing relationship. It goes back to our, I guess, historical and defence ties. I think Australians and Americans fought together in World War I. Uh, I think the formal defence alliance was agreed in 1951 with the signing of the ANZUS Treaty. And I think we've you know, really fought together in all major, major. Um, incidents around the world since that time. So I think it's a very long-standing defence and military relationship. Right, and the, good, the good part of that is that we were always on the same side, right? Indeed. <laughs> right. I think that's probably the case. We might have to... <laughs> <laughs> right. no, I hope that is. So, so I guess that's, that's sort of along with right. the history. I think there's obviously been trading history for mm -hmm. many years, from Australia's inception to, uh, to now. There's a long trading and investment relationship, which I might spend a bit more time on if we can. I think there's obviously sporting connections. There's uh, you know film, movie, arts, entertainment connections that are growing. I think, um, but the, it's really the commercial relationship, which I think is the is a really important thing from my point of view as, a, right. as representing the Australian Trade Commission here in the United States. Uh, it's been a long-standing relationship. The U.S. is one of our most significant economic partners. We it is the largest two-way investment relationship. The U.S. is the largest investor in Australia. Australia, this is the number one destination for Australian investment abroad, and that's a significant part of our relationship. So, so you also asked about the relationship between Australia and, and the great state of Texas, right. and um, I guess there are some really interesting similarities. Of course, people often go to things like we're big, big open spaces, we've both got very identifiable accents, right. um, you know, the, the strong sense of, um, you know, identity and, uh, and I guess pride in our cultures. Right. But I think there's some really interesting parallels that people may not know about. I mean, the, our populations are a similar size. Texas is 26 million people, Australia is approximately 23 million people. Our economies are largely the same size. Australia is the world's large, 12th largest economy. Okay. And Texas, if it was considered in its own right, would be the world's 13th largest economy. Okay. The things that have driven our economic success, both in Australia and Texas, are very similar. Obviously, a reliance on on energy and minerals and things like tourism and education. Oh, yeah. So I think, um, and I think also the clusters of you know industry for the future are very similar um, opportunities to, to be focusing on. So that's why, from our point of view, it's a very attractive place really for us to be doing business. As I told you, I have a very dear friend <laughs> that lives in Western Australia, ah. and the similarity he liked to point out is how much larger Western Australia is than Texas. <laughs> Yes, well, I would, wouldn't compare landmass. I mean, we often compare our landmass to the United States, but again, right. the population is is, is quite different. So right. It's more the Texas population, so. Really neat. Yeah. Cool. Uh, what I also think is very interesting, maybe in the other direction, mm. is that uh, until now, uh, Australia uh, has not had a Consul General Office in Houston for a decade or two. Is that accurate? Yeah, so look, I don't know the full history, but there was a consul consulate here up until the mid-90s or okay. late 90s. Um, from about the late night, from 1999, I think it was, we've been represented in Houston by um, the uh, a w wonderful woman, uh, Nana Booker, who is the, was our honorary consul. Right. Um, she served for about 14, 15 years representing Australia right. ably in this market. Um, she's been a great friend and uh, sort of advisor to us along the way. Uh, and I guess it, it came to the point in time we decided to establish a consul. I should just say, the, the government also um, bestowed the honor of the, our first honorary consul emeritus to okay. Nana. So it's the ah. first time we've actually declared somebody and an honorary consul emeritus, okay. so we're very proud of that relationship. Okay. So. Well, well, what motivated uh, the idea to make it official now and mm. come here? And I understand you would have been quite involved in that in the Trade Commission, right? Sure, and I guess it comes back to this, the second part of your first question, okay. which was um, the relationship between Australia and Texas right. and Australia and Houston. Um, I guess, you know, really the thing that's brought us here is the strong reputation Houston has as the global energy. Right. Um, Australia is a is an energy power. We are a we are a global hub for resources and energy, and becoming more so. Um, natural gas is a big part of our economy. Uh, we currently are, are exporting a lot of our gas, but by 2020, we, there are there is predictions that we may well become the world's largest exporter of natural gas. Wow. So the ties between the American companies who are involved in exploring and developing and producing those resources in Australia. And Australian companies who are servicing those projects, but also supplying projects into the, the United States, is is long and tight. And so I guess it was an obvious starting point for us to be here. Right. Well, I know that Australia has this uh, very significant uh, history in mining, and uh, and 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 
and maybe though the the abundance of gas is kind of a new uh, phenomenon, right? Yeah, it's certainly been. Um, natural gas is a part of the energy mix in Australia. Right. I think as an export, though, as I say, it's a, I think a growing world share is is a big part of that. We have currently. Um, I think there's four major gas producing projects okay. happening around the country. Um, there are six of the world's largest LNG projects still under yep. construction and due to come online in 20, I think by 2017. Right. Um, and I think I say that will then lead to a fairly fairly large export market going right. forward. Right. Well, and then if you look at the overall Australian uh, economy, I mean now uh, exporting has always played mm -hmm. quite a huge role, right? Sure has. Right. So it seems like the United States and Australia are very similar in in some mm -hmm. of our debates on energy. Too. I mean, there's a, uh, from what I understand, there's quite a sustainable energy, clean energy movement in Australia that, that probably sort of competes and conflicts with uh, the fossil fuels uh, world. Is that accurate? Um, so yes, there's definitely a, a mix of um, energy sources in Australia. Um, traditional fossil fuels, obviously a growing proportion share of gas, um, as well as renewables in the form of solar particularly. Hydro is a significant part of our economy, as also um, other sort of renewable sources as well are in development. Okay, so Kelly, although you know trade has always been quite significant between our two countries, it's really sort of been on a continuous upswing for a decade or so, right? I think that's that's very true, and I think it's actually kind of interesting that this is the tenth anniversary of the um, Australian United States Free Trade Agreement coming into effect. Um, and I think in that time we've seen um, two-way trade between our two countries grow substantially. I think from something like forty odd billion dollars to about sixty billion dollars, um, and we've seen two-way investment um, more than double. I think obviously our consumers have all benefited from from lower tariffs going both directions. I think it's been a um, an important part of that story. Great, great. Um, so you're really sort of brand new to Houston right now. What mm. are you thinking so far? You love this nice climate? Loving the climate. I had a week away in a, in a southern hemisphere country <clears throat> last week to get a little bit of break from the heat. But okay. actually, and apart from the heat, I think Houston's been a very welcoming city. I think I think people are excited that the Australian government is, has established a presence here. People have been very welcoming. Um, people have been invited to various networking functions. PKF, for example, have uh, invited me along to a couple of uh, women's networking functions, which cool. is a great opportunity to, to yeah. meet some new, new connections. I guess one of our goals is to we, we had a fairly established business relationship when we arrived here. We've got a very active Australian-American Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess part of our goal is to go beyond the connections we have, beyond the energy connections, which are the basis of us being here, and really start to explore other industries and other opportunities for Australia. We think there are many. Um, it's interesting, the first couple of companies that visited me in, when we opened three months ago, uh, the first company was actually a sort of innovative health healthcare provider, right. um, provider of healthcare solutions. Um, the first university from Australia that came through with their vice chancellor was um, coming here to talk about the state of the tropics and the conditions of health in tropical climates yeah, and economies. Yeah. So <laughs> quite different from the traditional energy conversation that we've been Absolutely. having. So I think that's really uh, been a great fun to explore what's you know, in Houston, which provides opportunities for Australians, but also for the broader relationship. Great. So I know before Houston, you, you had a stint in Washington, mm -hmm. uh, but share your background. Interestingly, I guess the, the post here is established and, and led by the Australian Trade Commission, which I've been um, part of that organisation okay. for about 14 years. My background's government. I'm a, I'm a lawyer by training way back. Okay. Um, but uh, the last 14 years I've been working with the Australian Trade Commission. Um, prior to coming to Houston, I was in our Washington um, embassy, uh, and I guess we were running and looking after our business development for this part of the country from there, which I guess was was, was quite clear that it was a very difficult thing to do. I right. think one of the interesting challenges we we would often make field trips to Houston, um, but really we really didn't get a chance to get beyond Houston. So okay. to understand understand the rest of Texas and the other three states in our jurisdiction, which include Oklahoma, Arkansas and Louisiana was very hard to do. There was so much opportunity here in Houston right. that we kept getting trapped. So so I guess by being here, we have a really good chance to broaden our connections beyond beyond Houston okay. and around the state. Okay, and, and I understand your stint here is probably gonna not be real long. Um, no, I'm here, I'm here to establish the office. So I guess having been part of that business development for the last two or three years, um, I guess I was very keen to see the office be established, to be part of its its um, inauguration. But we have appointed somebody uh, to the longer term position. Um, we haven't announced who that person is yet, or the dates of that hey, commencement, and we're not going right to do it here. today either. <laughs> 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 but um, but yes, I think you know I expect that I'll be heading back to Australia towards the end of this year. Well, Kelly, thank you very much for uh, sharing your perspective on this interesting commerce topic. Great, thanks, Russ. It's been good to be with you. You bet. This has been another Thought Leader production brought to you by PKF Texas Entrepreneurs Playbook. Tune in next week for another chapter.